Hey everybody, Alex Kazor, SteelersDepot.com, back to do another initial analysis of the Steelers 16-10 victory over the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday afternoon. Pittsburgh now 6-5 on the year, and believe it or not, with all they've been through, if the season ended today, Steelers would be the sixth seed in the AFC wildcard race and be in the playoffs. Long ways to go before you actually crown that. Uh, this thing's going to come down, I'm sure, to the wire till week 17 for whoever's going to be involved, presumably the Steelers, in that mix. But let's talk about... What happened on Sunday, and I think the phrase really since, you know, you lost Ben, but especially these last couple of weeks and no more, I, I think, clear uh, as it was today, the, the mantra is by any means necessary. You got to do whatever it takes to get a victory. It doesn't matter if it's all defensive aided, offensive aided, the, the depth chart changes you got to make, bringing guys off the street or off of other offers as this team has done, you do whatever it takes to win. That is the mode that this team has to operate in from now until the rest of the season and that means doing things like benching Mason Rudolph which I'm sure you never really wanted to do but certainly had to do to give you a chance to win this one uh, you weren't going to win this game if Rudolph was your guy the rest of the way and so I think it was the right decision and I'm sure a lot of Steelers fans will argue an overdue decision to bench Rudolph but I, I thought the approach was correct you know I said at halftime you give Rudolph one drive out of the half, kind of see if he can calm down, and you kind of have a chance to take a break and a, and a breather and, and, and get this thing back on, on track, at least hopefully. And if he doesn't perform well and the first dri drive goes nowhere, then you got to bench him and put in Duck Hodges, and that's ultimately what happened. So Rudolph was terrible. There's no defense of it. Yes, he's been through a lot this week, but this was a real evaluation game of Rudolph. Was he going to fight? Was he going to flight uh, with everything he's been through these last 10 days? And he failed. There's no other way around that. Uh, he wasn't good enough today, and that was obvious to even the most casual football fan. And Hodges comes in. He was by no means perfect. The box score might not look the most glowing report ever, 5 of 11, but comes in, rips it. Uh, you know, the traits he's always shown, and this is evident from the first time watching him in training camp back in August in Latrobe, really late July, I guess, was the start of camp. He's, he's fearless. Um, he's willing to rip it. He'll throw it in a tight window. He's always kind of just playing with house money. I mean, a guy that probably shouldn't be where he is today, a UDFA trial kid from Sanford, had a great college career, but, you know, the odds of a guy making it to the NFL like this and, and this quickly, you know, are astronomically low so the guy just goes out there and has fun and plays under control and you know doesn't want to make mistakes and takes sacks and things like that um but the guy is fearless and, and more so than mason rudolph and that allows you to make plays like hitting james washington for a 79 yard touchdown which was a great run after catch by washington so look at the offense beyond rudolph uh the run game it, it, it had its moments it was better it needed to be better it should have been better against a bad Bengals run defense um, they ran power, you know, 15 times today, probably most of that's the Castro bowling and it was their most successful run scheme by far. And that's why they kept doing it so much. Uh, David Castro, I thought had a really nice game today, probably the best of any of the front five and, you know, behind them, you didn't get any crazy performances, but Kareth White showed you what he can do and, and, and be an explosive guy and have some speed ability to run away from some guys. And that's something that's pretty unique to that running uh, back room right now and then Benny Snell I thought was just really solid and yes it was a lot of plodding in two and three yard gains but the pile consistently moved forward he was able to get on the edge a couple times and make some plays make some cornerbacks miss which all running backs have to be able to do to, to uh, succeed in the NFL and most importantly his ball security was excellent especially late in the game that's a thing that we don't think about too much as football, football fans but uh man you're in a close game like that you gotta be able to, to grind out that victory get those last couple carries in I thought just his overall readiness and you know showing his football IQ holding on to the football not being careless with it not being loose with it sliding in balance on the last play of the game the 21 yard run he had to clinch it so just a really positive performance for a guy that's missed some time um probably hit some tired legs I'm sure it's not going to feel too good in the morning but uh, you think about the catch he had on Rudolph early in the game, uh, the first drive, I believe, that was a pretty high throw that could have been picked. Snell able to come down with that. You think about all the plays that he helped avoid disaster and uh, by not putting the ball on the ground and, and making some kind of big-time plays as a receiver, too, in, in, in that sense of it. So I thought just a nice game overall uh, from Snell. And then you saw a little bit of juice from Kareth White, who they didn't use enough. I don't know why he didn't play, really, in, in the second half. Um, I know they're going to be limited by personnel groupings because they're new and they're trying to pick up the playbook. They can only work in certain packages, but still thought you could have played him a little bit more. With receivers, had a ton to note. Washington with a great run after catch. Again, he's playing the best football of his career over the last month. I think even the Miami game where he didn't do much as a uh, receiver, but as a blocker, he made a couple impact plays. And then since then, he has made a couple of big plays as a receiver. You got Deion Kane. That's what you brought him in for, to be someone that Johnny Colton couldn't do. Uh, an aspect of it he couldn't do, which was be able to, to win vertical and catch the 50-50 contested football 
Uh, so he did that. He did his job. I thought Holton even played well on special teams. Uh, really did a good job in the coverage aspect. The, the special teams overall I thought was excellent today. Whether you're talking Boswell being, was he 2 for 2 or 3 for 3, whatever it was. Barry with a great game. Had a 60-yard net punt today. A season high for him. Holton was a big component of that. Justin Lane with a special teams tackle. Uh, Justin, uh, I said Justin Lane. Uh, who am I thinking of? Ola. Ola Daney with a forced fumble on the opening kickoff. And overall... You know, just holding their dangerous return, man. The Bengals' dangerous return guy, Brandon Wilson, to, I think, a 25-ish yard average. Um, no big plays there. So, great job all around, I thought. Uh, from a special team standpoint, they still can't block on kick returns, and that's probably not going to change this year. But, fine. I've accepted it. Don't like it, but I've accepted it for now, at least. And uh, at least the other aspects of special teams are playing uh, really well, and today especially. And that was a game where it's low-scoring, fuel-flipping kind of game. And so you had to have good special teams, and, and the Steelers got that. Defensively, you know, it, it was kind of the same as the Browns game last week where you kept the score down, some pressure early, kind of waned throughout the game. But you, you did reasonably well, but you needed the splash. You needed the big turnovers. And so you get that uh, from the Devin Bush force fumble. No play bigger than that than Bud Dupree with the sack. Fumble recovery uh, to, to end that game, essentially, uh, as well. So you got the big splash plays late. That's what seals the game. That's how this team is going to win. They're going to have to create big plays defensively and do just enough offensively to carry them over the finish line. So you saw the impact of those turnover plays. They're obvious, but um, without them, even if your defense plays reasonably well, which they have the last two weeks, but they had no takeaways against Cleveland, lose that one, and were in position to lose that this one or really get dangerously, dangerously close to it, uh, had Devin Bush not forced that fumble on Tyler Boyd. Uh, in the fourth quarter and then you got Bud Dupree to to kind of salt that one away so it's kind of the same story there but I just thought overall Watt Hayward um, did well Minka obviously you know being opportunistic Joe Hayden struggled did have a couple plays uh, in the fourth quarter a couple near interception plays but not his best game ever and so really just more of the same defensively I mean you expected to do well against a a poor Bengals uh, offense in, in general the run game I think he held Nixon in check reasonably well. He got a couple of uh, drives where he had some plays and, and created after contact. But it is Joe Mixon. He's a really good back. It is going to happen. Um, again, just nothing to kill you. And, and that was kind of the approach you had to take in this one. So moving forward, who do you start a quarterback? We'll see. Tomlin's playing coy about it. Says even if he knows, um, he's not going to tell anyone now. Hopefully you'll have an answer on Tuesday. I think that's reasonable to expect. You don't want to you know, play around with that decision and the team needs to know who the guy is and, and who their, their quarterback is moving forward for, for this week and presumably the rest of the season. If it was me, I mean, I'm going with Duck Hodges. I, I just think the writing's on the wall. Again, you really can't be in evaluation mode right now. Of course, you want to see Rudolph and get as much information on, on him as possible, but I think you've gotten a lot of information so far. A lot of it recently has been negative. And you got to win. you got to find ways to win. We can't go with this back and forth and hold your breath with Rudolph and see if he can get better. Um, Hodges is playing well, even with very, very limited practice reps. You think about the Ravens game, his first uh, NFL debut. He got literally zero reps that week. He probably had limited reps this week, some scout team work, you know, but not much. And so I'd be really interested to see what he can do with an actual full complement of starting reps and um as difficult that was be as it would be because you know everything you've invested and talked about with Rudolph you got to put your team in the best position to win you know you're playing this season not to evaluate Mason Rudolph you to make the decisions based off of who you drafted and where they were drafted you make decisions solely off of who gives you the best chance to win and that's going to be Duck Hodges so if it was me and I hope Tomlin comes to this conclusion Duck Hodges should be the starter against Cleveland on Sunday one o'clock We'll see. We'll obviously let you know and have a reaction to that on SteelersDepot.com. So let me know your thoughts about this game. Again, much needed win. You had to have it. You moved to 6-5. and five. Still a ways to go. You scratch and clawing. But again, any means necessary. Steelers did it today. So enjoy this one. Uh, lots to talk about. A lot of controversy coming up. But uh, we'll let you know. And let me know your thoughts, whether you're listening on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at Alex underscore or, or follow the website SteelersDepot.com. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll talk to you.